Hola friends, Pete here. The institution of policing is coercive, that's a fact, but it doesn't automatically follow that it's productive to treat all police employees badly. Wait, what the hell am I talking about? It is protocol in the injustice system for police employees who violate the rights or who kill those they claim to protect and serve to not be held accountable for their misdeeds. Those individuals should be held accountable, there's no question about it. That's not what I'm talking about today. What I'm talking about is a police employee you happen to cross on the street, on your terms. Police employees are people. Sure, it may satisfy some simplistic urge to call them pigs behind their back or to their faces, or to spray paint an abandoned wall with all cops are bastards, but what productive really comes from that stance? Ask yourself. You know police employees only protect themselves and their political friends, those are the incentives built in to the injustice system. But it could be that some police employees haven't even considered such an idea. Sure, a police employee may admit off the record that they have a colleague who is sometimes heavy handed or that they one time even covered up for somebody. But overall, I'd guess the average police employee hasn't really considered too deeply the provision of security provided at the barrel of a gun. If you levy hate at a person based solely on their attire, you only reinforce the division upon which these folks thrive, and the world that is manifested based on this master-slave dichotomy. To erode that world, and to replace it with something better, I encourage you to have a conversation with a police employee on your own terms. For example, hi, do you have a couple minutes? Cool. Yeah, I just wanted to broach this conversation, and you know, I'll be the first to admit it's probably not one that you have too frequently, but I think it's important because obviously you chose to go into policing, therefore, you know, I would assume that you purport to want to serve and protect people and uh, hold aggressors accountable, but how is that best done? For me, it comes down to the difference between a coercive interaction, one that's forced with no choice, and a consensual interaction, one that two or more parties voluntarily agree to, etc., etc. Most police employees have their own self-identity intrinsically tied to their occupation. If confronted with a hostile tone, the brain will not even allow them to consider a different idea. It will reject it on its face. It is much more productive then to share ideas based on consensual interactions with police employees in an environment in which they are receptive. Not by getting in their face and yelling at them and demeaning them, but by trying to have a rational conversation and at least broaching the issue. Like us, police employees have been subjected to police hero worship in public schools, but unlike us, they've been immersed in it in police academies and now in their police departments. Therefore, don't expect one conversation with a police employee to cause them to step away from their own self-identity that was formed over years and decades, but instead Think of it as planting a seed. You're helping to grow a more humane world, one mind at a time. That's why, easy as it is to focus on yet another aggressor who happens to wear a police badge, I think it's equally important to give love to the police employees that have broke ranks and have spoken out about misdeeds that they have seen. Frank Serpico is one of the most well-known such figures. More recently, Adrian Schoolcraft, also from the NYPD, spoke out about quotas and some other departmental policies that he didn't find too favorable. Renee Crum, employed at the Ozark, Alabama Police Department, recently made public that two murders that happened 16 years ago were caused by a Henry County law enforcement employee. And Randy Henry, employed at the Missouri State Highway Patrol, made clear that the death of a man who his colleague had put in handcuffs was due to his colleague's actions. I hope these sorts of reports of police employees who break ranks and speak out or who quit their job based on principle become more common, and I think they will be, especially if you and I take it upon ourselves to have these conversations with police employees. If you truly want to erode the police state, don't do it with hate, do it with love.